Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to Morning Co <laughs> Sorry. I tried to keep it together, but I couldn't. But welcome to Morning Coffee, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am very, very grateful to have you all here. Thank you so much. I hope you all are having a good week. Um, for those of you on winter break, I hope you're still enjoying your winter break, yes? So, this is going to be a general energy reading for Thursday, December 27th, 2018. Um, please keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. Also, this is not sign-specific, uh, love-specific, career-specific. This is not anything specific. This is just what Spirit would like to discuss with us today, yeah? So, just a little bit of a uh, heads up. if any of you have not seen it yet, I did release the 2019 six-month forecasts yesterday. Uh, please go check those out if you haven't had a chance to do so. If you would like your own forecast, those are available. Just go ahead and send me an email because those obviously are general. So if you'd like a personal one, go ahead and email me and we can get you all set up. And... Yeah, energies are fluid, guys. So just because this is what's coming through today doesn't necessarily mean that this is what should be or will be happening to you today uh, or for you today. Um, this could be something that you went through in the past that we're discussing or it could be something that's coming up. It may not be anything at all for you, but please, I do recommend that you hang out with us for a little bit. Maybe you might get some good nuggets of information, yeah? So before we start the reading today, um, I do want to throw out there that there were two songs that came to my head this morning. The first one was what I woke up to, which is New Rules by Dua Lipa. If you don't know that song, check it out. It's a great song. It's a really great song, but it's a narrative that many of us are dealing with right now. Um, it talks about basically not giving in to someone whom you had some sort of relationship with, but it just seems like they're somewhat narcissistic, yeah? Um, but then there was a second song that came in later, and that was Rock Steady by Aretha Franklin. Um, and when I finish this reading, I'm going to go listen to it because I've never, I've heard it before. I've heard it a few times before, but I've never actually really listened to the words, um, investigated the words. So uh, we'll see what comes out in the reading today. But if any of that resonates with you already, there you have it. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let's get started here. Oh, also one other thing that I want to mention. Um, I may not do uh, uh, monthly readings are going to be coming out. I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to do, um, a mid-month check-in halfway through January, or if I want to try and get um, a monthly reading out before the beginning of January. But seeing as how today is November, uh, November <laughs> December 27th, um, you know, I may not be able to get a monthly out before the start of January. I did already, already reach my goal of doing the, the six-month check-ins, but I'm, I'm, I'm debating about, because the original plan was to do the six-month check-in and then do a mid-month reading for January later on down the road but just just to put that out there to throw that out there if any of you were wondering if there were going to be any monthlings any monthlings <laughs> goodness monthly readings uh the plan right now is to have a mid-month check-in out by around the 15th or so okay so there it is okay here we go guys <laughs> hi spirit please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for Thursday, December 27th, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. Yeah, that song, Rock Steady by Aretha Franklin, that is rock and steady in my head right now. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Ooh, whoa, okay. Let's try that again. Hmm. All right. Thursday. Sorry, guys. Okay. Sorry, I had to 
adjust the mic there. Okay, here we go. Thursday, December 27th, 2018. Goodness. One more shuffle, and then we'll see what we've got for today. Okay, here we go, guys. Thursday, December 27th, 2018. What you got for us today, Spirit? Hmm. Okay. That looks like it is, that is it. All right. So underneath the deck, we are starting out with the chariot. Look at that, guys. So rock and steady, moving forward. I definitely think that's definitely applicable here. We've got two sets that I'm going to look at, but we're going to start with this one that fell out first. Oh, whoa, guys. We've got, we're starting out with counterparts already. King of Cups. Whoa, Queen of Cups. The Lovers. Wow. We've got the Page of Swords. The High Priestess. And the Hanged Man. Wow, that's just the first set of cards, you guys. Okay. There are definitely energies of counterparts here. We definitely, you could be, some of you, you could be dealing with a Cancerian, you could be dealing with a Pisces, you could be dealing with a Scorpio, or a Gemini. Those are the major archetypes that you could be dealing with. There's a lot of water energy between, I mean, you have Cancer, Pisces, and Scorpio here. Scorpio in the King of Cups. Cancer in the Queen of Cups and the Chariot, Pisces in the Hanged Man. But then, of course, you could have all three just in the King and the Queen of Cups. Whoa. That's really cool. So already what this is speaking to is the balance between Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine within. Okay? Between the King of Cups, the Queen of Cups, and the Lovers. All right, this is speaking to um, that balance. That's the first thing that comes to mind for me. And then because it's focused within the cups suit, this is love, this is healing, emotions, emotional maturity. Interesting. So underneath the king of cups is the page of swords. Underneath the queen of cups is the high priestess. And underneath the lovers is the hanged man. And so these are like, these are like clarifications of each one here. So the King of Cups, the masculine energy here is learning. The Queen of Cups or the feminine energy here is keeping to herself. And then when it comes to the relationship between the two, there's a, I'm going to say a stalemate. Stalemate is the first word that comes to mind. Um, 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 stalemate is the first word that comes to mind, but this is all in efforts of, very interesting, this is all in efforts of gaining enlightenment, especially for the masculine energies here. Okay, so what I'm seeing is that the feminine energies have kind of taken a step, a step back. And with the Page of Swords here, the masculine energies may be like, whoa, wait a second, why has she disappeared? Why has she gone silent on me? What's going on here? It's almost as if what I'm seeing here is the, the masculine energies are going through a period of almost initiation where they're having to fend for themselves a little bit, which is why they're showing up with the Page of Swords. But it's not a cruel type situation. This is like a situation where the feminine is saying or recognizing that I that she can't help with this any longer. There's nothing really that she can do. It's up to the masculine now to take the next steps and and initiate basically go through the rest of his awakening or initiation. 
and please don't get me please don't get me wrong this is not to say that now the masculines are on their own forever there is just there's a level of experience that they're going through right now that they need to do on their own and this doesn't have to be just like say if you're a twin flame um, this doesn't have to be just your divine masculine in the physical realm your physical counterpart this could be the masculine energies within you please it, uh, the, the, the one thing that I want to say about my readings moving forward especially into the new year because they're all going to be focused like this moving forward please take any messages that come through about divine masculine or divine feminine energies first and foremost see how that resonates within you because that's really the one thing you have the most control over the balance between masculine and feminine energies within you okay the lovers all right so with that said the masculine energies are going through some sort of initiation period and it's really propelling everything forward i mean there's movement even though we have the hanged man here which is speaking of stagnancy a little bit i mean that's the word that's coming through in my opinion that's what i'm hearing stagnancy but there's still movement because we're breaking through the stagnancy because now the masculines are learning is the key word here with the page of swords learning page of swords king of cups they're learning emotional maturity they're learning to step into their own they're learning to fend for themselves um well not fend for themselves they're learning to defend their own emotions okay let's see what we have what are because the, there are three more cards here we have well look at that Five of Pentacles, the Tower, the Two of Pentacles. Hmm. Uh, hold, excuse the noise, guys. I am going to adjust the microphone one more time. Okay. I apologize if that, like, wreaks havoc on your ears. <sighs> well, my, my, my. Now... This is the second, the, the five of pentacles, the tower, and the two of pentacles. These are, these are the energies, if you were watching me shuffle, um, they flew out over this way, like towards this end of the table here. Okay, so what does this mean? Five of pentacles is saying there is a real, well, okay, between the five of pentacles and the tower. There was a realization of inadequacy here. And it's funny or it's interesting because usually when the five of pentacles comes out, we talk about how you are good enough. You are enough. Um, that sort of narrative. But here, coupled with the with the tower, um, there are individuals, and I, I'm, I don't even want to know if, I, or excuse me, I don't even know if I want to split this between masculine and feminine because I feel like on some level, everybody is going through this. Okay. Um, but people are starting to come to an awareness of where they may have been lacking in the past. Um. So let's put it this way. For the masculines, obviously, that's not so hard to understand. Okay. For the feminines, though, the narrative of being on a higher level or a higher vibration than the masculine is starting to wear thin because there are energies within the feminine collective of starting to realize where you may have slipped up. Um, where you may have been, quote, wrong, where you may have been coming from a place of lack, coming from a place of fear. Now, all of us that went th that are going through our awakening process, we're all pushing through our fears and our woundings, right? So in no, so it doesn't really, so that's why I put wrong in air quotes, because it's not really wrong. It's just a place, it's just where you are 
<clears throat> you're acting through the emotions here. Um, but that has created a tower moment. Okay. So for the masculines, they're seeking with the page of swords. They could be watching you. I mean, this has been coming out a lot. You could be, you could say, well, you know, so-and-so is watching me, blah, blah, blah. They may be energetically stalking you. For the most part, that's what I'm getting. This is energetic mostly, but also it, that aside, masculine energies are really seeking truth. They're seeking answers because of, now, this five of pentacles could also mean this just came through. For some of you, this could mean being ghosted, right? And you have that here with the high priestess on the queen of cups. She ain't saying shit, y'all. She's just sitting there on her throne, just watching it all happen. And this is a and this is a place of balance. Okay, what I'm seeing here now is the divine feminine having risen is still on the is still on the rise. Don't get me wrong, but having ris having risen to a certain level and just kind of sitting there watching what's happening. I guess you could say the chaos in the wake of her rising. Like it's almost like <laughs> it's almost like she's taking a break for a moment before she rises some more, okay? And then the Divine Masculine is seeking through the chaos, the Page of Swords. And then here with the Two of Pentacles, it's just about trying to keep everything in balance, keep everything in check. It's about juggling. For some of you, what I'm getting is you're learning what it is, what it is you need to stop juggling what it is you can let go of. Some of you are realizing that you're juggling too much or you're juggling falsehoods and basically lying to yourself. And you could be coming to terms with that and letting it go. And I'm hearing ego there. For some of you, this is totally about ego. Now with the chariot also, the chariot is talking about movement. Yes, but in here, this is, wow. This is some really intense movement. Very, very strong movement. And it may not necessarily be what you expect to experience with movement, but there's a lot of internal change here that's going on. Um... <laughs> the, the Dua Lipa's song uh, uh, New Rules is definitely what this high priestess is singing <laughs> right now <laughs> Ooh, if you haven't heard that song guys go ahead and look it up Dua D-U-A Lipa L-I-P-A two words Dua Lipa she's fantastic alright I guess we can go ahead and get some clarification here But if you're looking, even if you're looking at this that, that about the or but through the the window of both energies within you, masculine and feminine, the masculine side of you could really be searching for ways to heal, searching for the discrepancies, searching for the inadequacies, searching for the faults in the foundation, the tower, the five of pentacles. And trying to bring those into balance, the two of pentacles. Hmm. All right, let's get clarification going now. So we're going to clarify the king of cups first. Okay, Spirit, for today, Thursday, December 27th, 2018, please clarify. We're going to start with the King of Cups and the Page of Swords, please, Spirit. Nine of Swords, 
Ace of Cups. Interesting. Um, okay. That's all they want to say about that. Underneath the deck is... Wow. Okay. Underneath the deck is the Four of Wands. Um, and we have the Nine of Swords. But the Nine of Swords fell off to the side and um, is falling sideways. So some, some masculine energies are coming out of um, a period of anxiety, fear. Some of them are still stuck in it, but I think it's, it's an energy of back and forth. It's like you're not quite out of it, but you're not quite in it. You're not quite caught up in your fear and you're not quite um, out of it. But I feel like, I honestly, I feel like I do want to just turn it right side up because with it here at all is, I mean, if it, if it were completely reversed, that would be different. But um, it's almost like you're trying to hide your anxiety or fear from yourself. Now, I am getting energies of the divine masculine counterparts, you know, in the physical realm, those who resonate more with the divine masculine energies are seeking union. Four of Wands. And this could mean anything. For the most part, this is the union of self right now. Reunion with self. Ace of Cups. And the first thing that came into mind, I do want to say this, the first thing that came through when this card came out was that um, some of them do have love to give, do want to offer a cup of love. And that's where this anxiety comes into play. And that's where the Page of Swords comes into play. Because they're trying to figure out how to do it at this point. Things have gone so out of control at this point that they are afraid they will never be able to make some sort of offer. But the trick here divine masculine is to find union within first fill this cup of love for yourself first and from there you will begin to realize or understand that anything can be healed but you have to release your pride and your ego towards doing that this is what's causing your the the fear and anxiety your pride and ego. This is why you have the Nine of Swords energy kind of plaguing you because it's like some it's like you feel like you're not there's nothing to be afraid of, but then at the same time you're caught up in all the what ifs and the worst case scenarios. That's your ego. Okay? You have to release that. And the best way to do that is to find the love within yourself to understand what has gone on and why things happened the way they did. Okay? The union is being sought for wands. All right, let's clarify the Queen of Cups now. Hmm, cards really aren't talking much today. Good Lord. Okay, we've got the Four of Swords, first of all. But then guys, look at what's underneath the deck. The King of Cups. <laughs> okay, well obviously the Divine Feminine has taken a step back. And we knew this. We've known this for some time. This has been the narrative for some time, but... But the Divine Feminine really has taken a step back and is not focused on trying to help right now. 
She's conserving her energy. And I'm seeing that many of us, and this is this has been coming through because like some of my friends or, and a lot of the people that I've connected with here, they've been mentioning this and I've been experiencing it. But there's, I mean, we're exhausted. Four of Swords, we are absolutely exhausted. I mean, like it's gotten to a point where <laughs> I get up in the morning. Lately, I've been getting up. Like I've been waking up, like becoming conscious and looking at the clock and being like, oh, okay. And then literally just wanting to turn over and go right back to sleep. Like <laughs> that happened to me this morning. I got up and, and I have been getting up a little bit later because I don't have to be like at class. I don't have to be places as early right now just because I'm on winter break. But like I got up, I woke up this morning at five and was like, okay. And I rolled back over and went to sleep. Woke up at six, said, all right, well, I guess I should get up now. Got up, started meditating, meditated for like a good 30, 40 minutes and said to myself, can I go back to sleep for like maybe another 20? It's like, no, Eric, make your tea and get started on your daily reading. <laughs> but look, we're exhausted. So no, we're not helping right now. We're not giving anything to the efforts that the divine masculine is needing to put forth his own energy towards. But this is more than just we're not doing it because we're tired. It's because it's not our place to do so any longer. The high priestess says there is nothing else that the divine feminine can do on your behalf, divine masculine, for you to get to where you want to go. You have to do this on your own now. And please understand when I say you have to do this on your own doesn't mean you're completely alone. No, but you have to take the lead now. And this is what you're learning to do. <clears throat> King of Swords, oh, not King of Swords, Page of Swords. You're learning to do that, Divine Masculine Energies. And this could be the masculine energies within you. But see here, for the Divine Feminine, many what, what the King of Cups is underneath the deck is saying here is many of us are in a state of balance already between the masculine and feminine energies. And so we do kind of have to just rest because the energies are continuing to integrate. This is so weird. It's really weird to look at it. It's weird and interesting actually to look at it this way because I, I'm looking at it as the masculine energies within, but it's still split in some way. It's like, I guess that's the multi-dimensional nature of, of our existence. You have to be able to see it from a bunch of different points of view and put them all together. It's weird. It's definitely a skill to acquire. <laughs> all right, so then with the hanged man and the lovers here, I just, can we just talk about for a second how the King of Cups is underneath the deck, clarifying the Queen of Cups? And we already had the King of Cups and the Queen of Cups come out together. I mean, like, come on, guys. Can't make this shit up. But the other message that I'm getting with the, queen, with the King of Cups here, the King of Cups is watching the Queen of Cups. And this is for Twin Flames, sure. We could be talking Twin Flames. We do have the lovers here. We could be. Anything is possible. You don't have to be a Twin Flame to resonate with this. You could have someone out there that is your counterpart, maybe that you're aware of, maybe that you're not aware of yet, but someone, someone loves you. Someone loves you. For somebody, for some people out there, somebody loves you, King of Cups. And they're watching you. And I don't want that to sound creepy. It's not meant to be creepy. This isn't like creepy stalker status. I'm hiding out in your bushes. I'm um, doing a slow, slow drive by by your house five times a day like that. No, I mean, it could it's it could be something like that. But it, that's not the energy that I'm feeling. I'm feeling if somebody is this is like an admirer. Somebody is admiring you. Somebody loves you for who you are. Somebody wants to communicate with you, take a next step and communicate with you. Page of Swords. Look, and it, it is true. Somebody does have some pretty deep feelings. Maybe some sorry, sorrowful feelings, because I just heard I'm sorry again, but um, Ace of Cups, someone, reali someone realizes that they really do want you in their life, and they don't know how to go about telling you. Nine of Swords, 
for many of you, the situation has gotten just so out of control, or at least seemingly out of control. And the universe just said that to me, seemingly out of control, because ultimately this is great. This is part of the greater plan. In order for to, in order for the integration to happen, the lovers, the hanged man, you had to be put in this really tough position. We chose this, ultimately, point blank. We all chose the circumstances that we came down under. We all chose the families that we chose to reson uh, um, well resonate with, but incarnate with. We all chose the circumstances by which we were meant to experience things in our lives so that we could reach this enlightenment with the, with the hanged man and the lovers, right? So ultimately we chose this so that we could learn and we could grow and we could heal, all right? So let's get some clarification now on the hanged man and the lovers, please, spirit. Temperance, whoa. All right, well, temperance flew out and it fell reversed on the divine masculine or on uh, the king of cups over there. I think something else flipped out. Let me, I uh, flipped over in the deck. Let me just look real quick. Yep, there it is. Nope, 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 nope. I lied. Oh no, no, I lied. I'm a big fat lying liar full of lies, you guys. Okay. <laughs> um, underneath the deck, you have the queen of wands. All right, let me just, give me a second here. Let me just take stock of this. Strength in reverse. The 10 of cups, my, my, my. All right, so the first thing that the strength in reverse is saying to me is um, release of pride and ego. And that's, that's big. This is for them, and that's, that's something for the masculine energies. And this doesn't just mean the divine, those who identify as the divine masculine. I'm talking about the masculine energies within all of us because divine feminines who have been balancing your masculine energies, let me tell you, many of us have been on a pretty serious ego trip and I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to front, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it, I'm not even going to lie and say I wasn't part of that. You damn right, you, you know for a fact, I know for a fact I was part of that. Still kind of am, to be quite honest. Why? because I'm having so much trouble releasing and forgiving because my ego is all up in that shit. Strength in reverse. But this is all, but see, this is how, this is a lesson between, for all of us, for all divine masculine energies, for all divine feminine energies, regardless of how you resonate with the two, specifically how what percentage of of masculine what percentage of feminine you resonate with within your own self all of these lessons are universal we're all experiencing them in different ways and all of it is leading us to ultimate emotional fulfillment and the, with the ten of cups and here what the ten of cups ultimately is saying when you zoom out and you look at the situation from a higher point of view the Ten of Cups just means healing a full heart, a healed heart. Because this whole family dynamic, this whole marriage dynamic, this is, the way we see this right now, the way we see family, we see marriage, we see all this stuff, this is three-dimensional in nature. When you zoom out and look at it from a higher perspective, we're all family. We're never alone. We are all individual parts of the same whole. We are all brothers and sisters, right? So the true, ex the, really what this 10 of cups represents ultimately is a healed heart and the recognition of our oneness, our unity. You have the six of pentacles with the nine of pentacles. Autonomy. There is a lesson here in the integration that's happening and this actually, wow, this is pretty deep. With the lovers and the hanged man, we're being, basically, we're being forced to come into union within, okay, between the masculine and feminine energies within. 
And in that, you learn or you have the opportunity. And it's funny because this is actually something that came to mind yesterday for me. You have the opportunity to understand that you, you really don't need anyone else. And I'm saying this as lightly as I can. I guess for lack of a better phrase, you don't really need anyone else. Everything that you need is already within you, nine of pentacles. Now that's not to say that, um, you know, you're not meant, because ultimately, and I say, I say this lightly because ultimately we are social beings, we are social creatures, okay? We do basically rely on each other, but that's because we are all meant to work together. But it's the codependence, the codependent energy that I'm speaking of here. Even though it's not, we don't have the devil. The Nine of Pentacles talks about independence. But when you're independent with your, within, in and of yourself, then you are able to really be of value to everyone else around you. Six of Pentacles, reciprocity. You're able to, to exchange in that even balance between give and take. When you recognize that you are already whole in and of yourself. Again, you don't need anyone else for your own survival, I guess we'll call it. You are self-sufficient in and of yourself. You are made to be self-sufficient in and of yourself. But then it's through that self-sufficiency that we all come together and thrive as one. Six of Pentacles. Underneath the deck, you have the Queen of Wands. And this is the cardinal energy of the divine feminine that we are learning from. If, if, uh, if you're not familiar, if you're new to my channel and you're not familiar with how I how I delineate things, I do see the Queen of Wands and the King of Wands as the ultimate depiction of the Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine in the form of Twin Flames in the Minor Arcana. And that would be reflected, that would be a reflection of the Emperor and the Empress in the Major Arcana. But I'm seeing the cardinal energy of the um, Queen of Wands, which also represents Aryan energy. Aries, leaders, independent, self-sufficient. The Divine Feminine is teaching us this. Now, Temperance. Let's go back to this card that flew out because this was the first card that flew out while I was um, clarifying the lovers and the hanged man. Temper temperance is in reverse here. And that's, that, that fell on the depiction of the Divine Masculine in an emotional point, from an emotional point of view, as the King of Cups. And so what, is, what this is saying here is that, is that there is a new form of alchemy in the works. There may be a good deal of impatience, <clears throat> potentially. And I'm actually, I'm not saying this is actually happening. I'm not saying that the Divine Masculine is, in fact... Um, acting from impatience, what I'm saying here is that there is a possibility that this that that tempers could flare and people could just be like, "Rah, I'm tired of waiting." That's 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 possible. I'm not saying it's actually happening, even though it's entirely possible. It probably is, but uh, that's not. <laughs> I'm just speaking to the probability, because there is a deep, deep, deep. Whoa, guys, this is deep. Sense of re-alchemization there is some new alchemy happening alchemy happening here for the energies of the divine masculine a new a new form of synthesis a new process of synthesis is underway here and this absolutely is something that the masculine energies need to experience or go through on their own why because the divine well because both of us have to take both of us, and I, by that I mean the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine, we need to take control of our ascension. 
No one can do it for us. We have to do it for ourselves, by ourselves. Now, obviously you're not gonna do it completely alone because God, source, creator, whatever, the universe, your higher self, your angels, your guides, your ancestors, how, whatever you resonate with, they're not gonna leave you alone. But also, they're not gonna get involved unless you ask them to. Why? Free will. Okay, so if you want help, just go on and ask for it. <laughs> All right. But you have to take the reins here. And the Divine Feminine kind of did that already. Um, and it's not even like, and, and it's funny because it's not even like she really had a choice. She basically had to. She was forced to. But it was more of a situation where it was like a, a deep knowing of what needed to be done. And because the feminine energies are cardinal in nature anyway, she just did it. She just straight up did it. But you see, the, divine, the masculine energies are fixed, which means they need a little coaxing. They are not too keen on change. They're about form and structure. The masculine energies are of physical nature, three-dimensional nature. Feminine energies are of esoteric nature, spirit. Spirit flows in chaotic ways. But the physical is rooted, is grounded, is solid, is stable, is usually unwavering. It takes a lot of energy to move something within the physical world. So that only makes sense. All right, so now I just want to clarify this bottom row as a whole. I'm not going to split them up, but we have the Five of Pentacles, the Tower, and the Two of Pentacles, please, Spirit. Seven of Swords, it looks like. Yep. Ooh, Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Underneath the deck, oh my God, is the King of Cups again. Oh, 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 whoa. Five of Swords. And then that opened up to the King of Wands also. So there is the, the, the Divine Masculine counterpart to the Queen of Wands that came out earlier. Good Lord, what does this mean? Well, first of all, the energy that I'm getting from the Queen of Pentacles is re in reverse is coddling. Smother energy. Okay, so we're talking about the masculine energies here. And uh, for some of us, like for those of you on the divine feminine camp, on the divine feminine side of the spectrum, um, these, this is energies of trying so hard to, to, to be an energetic um, battery for your divine masculine, okay? Over nurturing, just like being, just being there too much. And this is on an energetic level. Releasing this. I mean, that's a tower moment. Realizing that you may have done more to um, enable your divine masculine. You may have even come to a realization, some of you, that you actively put forth energy towards him or her, leaving you out in the cold. By, by generating or being that energy reserve for them that they fed off of and that just helped to keep them in the mind state that they were in. Why? Because those reserves of that mind state needed to be depleted. But we didn't quite see it that way at that point. Now we do, the tower. And so now we do what we need to do to maintain our own balance. Okay, now, for others, and I don't normally read into karmic relationships. I don't normally speak towards karmic relationships, but um, the Queen of Pentacles sometimes can re can represent karmic relationships. This doesn't have to be, you know, a karmic partner, as in like a romantic partner. Uh, the first thing that I'm seeing is a mother-like energy. And that would be karmic in nature. I mean, because we choose the families that best suit our ascension or our growth. 
So we incarnate within those specific families. So parental relationships definitely are karmic in that sense. And when it comes to the King of Cups here, we're talking about the Divine Masculine and this new form of alchemy. Many of them are coming to recognize the fact that they have had some not some pretty unhealthy relationships potentially with their mothers. Seven of Swords, Five of Swords. There are some karmic relationships out there that are, that are still happening right now in which um, deception is coming into focus. Someone or some some element to the situation was defeating, self-defeating. And this is for both parties. Like if there was someone out there that was, you know, basically just what I'm getting is just an energy of being in it for themselves, but not really showing it. Five of Swords being in it for themselves, which ultimately is a detriment to themselves too. Because when they hurt others, they hurt you. Really, you hurt yourself as well. But with the Seven of Swords, this was hidden, or at least trying to be hidden. And now it's kind of coming towards the surface. This is what is going to need to be realized or worked through for the Divine Masculine to come into some sort of greater emotional balance. And that is what's happening with this, uh, this new alchemy that's going through, that's in the process of going through with Temperance that fell on the King of Cups up there. They need to come to this realization on their own. You need to come to this realization on your own. You need to see it for what it truly is. But that's when the alchemy comes into play because you need to be forgiving. You need to be compassionate. You need to work towards seeing things from a greater point of view and understand, that the, le understand the lessons that everyone is learning here, including this karmic partner, Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Okay? Wow. And this definitely could be happening for those on the Divine Feminine camp when it comes to your own masculine energies. Like, like I said, take, try and see how this can resonate within you. Look deeper into the reality of your relationship between masculine and feminine within and see where you lie on this spectrum. We all really need to start paying attention to both masculine and feminine energies within all of us because we have them and we need to find that state of union within before we can have any sort of union without or externally. So let's go into our Oracle Guidance section now. Please don't quote me on this, guys, but I really do feel compelled. I really do want to work on having some sort of monthly reading out for January before like a mid-month. Maybe I'm just picking up on your desire for that, <laughs> the audience's desire, but I do want to try and see how I can work that out. It may not be available before the beginning. Like it may not, I may not be able to have it out until maybe like the second or third of the month but we'll see we shall see guys all right one more shuffle and then we're gonna get some animal guidance for today's reading all righty guys here we go thank you so much spirit guidance for today's reading turtle is what that was that's enough underneath the deck oh yes 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 okay turtle came out turtle is a reverse Ooh. There's Tarantula again. Okay, Tarantula came out yesterday. Um, I might recap that, but we have Turtle and we have Sea Serpent. Lots of water energy, but also spirit energy. I'm gonna start with Turtle. Turtle did come out in reverse. The first thing I think of with that is coming out of your sh out of your shell. Uh, but as far as the divine masculine energies go, coming out of the shells. But here we go, turtle. Ancient soul, grounded, trusting, at home in the self. It is wonderful to be in the presence of a turtle personality. 
Like the beaver, the turtle has a strong relationship with the earth and water elements simultaneously. This helps to ground and connect them to the deeper truths of life, no matter where their travels lead them. Turtle energy is behind all great writers and storytellers as they collect life experiences under their shells for later use. The most potent turtle energy helps us close all close all the other books and begin to tell our own true tale. Okay, that makes perfect sense because as I was reading the key words for this card, um, or phrases at least, one of them being at home in the self, with it coming out in reverse, I really feel like there's like an excavation happening. It came out in reverse because we're trying to become more at home within ourselves. It's almost like we're remodeling. And then this it finishes, the, the, it, the definition finishes with, the most potent turtle energy helps us close all other books and begin to tell, begin to tell, to, oh, wow, begin to tell our own true tale. So it's like we're cleaning out, we're doing the housekeeping, a cleaning house in order to find what our true tale is, find that true balance within. When in balance, turtle is peaceful, adventurous, and productive. When out of balance, turtle slows down to a halt. To bring into balance, one must go on an adventure. And uh, finally, we have sea serpent, but um, spirit is calling me to recap tarantula real quick because that is on the bottom of the deck right now that was under sea serpent tarantula at a crossroad claiming life's purpose the tarantula represents a moment when a great decision must be made it involves prioritizing your life's deeper purpose i want to pull this out so you guys can see it it involves prior to prioritizing your life uh your life's deeper purpose or dharma a habit or routine from the past is sidetracking you from your dream, yet a voice inside keeps begging you to refocus your attention. In order to find true happiness, you must choose Dharma. Until you do, satisfaction will be fleeting. The tarantula hovers, patient and calm, like an old friend that knows your inner soul. It already knows you'll choose wisely. When in balance, tarantula follows its intuition. When out of balance, tarantula hesitates and over-intellectualizes. To bring into balance, one must do some daily journaling. Okay. So, finally, we have sea serpent. Ooh. All right, I have to make this quick, guys. The sun is creeping up on me here. <laughs> sea serpent. Healing emotional wounds, expressing desires. The sea serpent represents the energy of expression, whether it's emotions, creativity, sensuality, or desire. The sea serpent helps us move and direct our energy into a healthy current. When the essence of this card is in balance, we express ourselves creatively and sexually without fear or shame. We know what we desire most. Our hearts are at ease and our relationships are meaningful and enduring. We loosen the grip of self-judgment and we let the cool waters of forgiveness in to heal our wounds. When the energy of the sea serpent is not yet activated, our emotions and creativity are left in the muddy waters. The current of expression stagnates in some areas of our lives and in other places it floods. It's important to remember, no matter what the waters of our emotional lives look like, the sea serpent loves us just the same. Like a mother, she wraps herself around us in a gesture of protection. She supports us as we learn to express our true natures. The sea serpent and the second chakra. The subtle energy of the sea serpent occupies the area of the Svadhisthana chakra. Located deep within the pelvic bowl, this chakra is known as our center of creativity and desire and is associated with the water element. Svadhisthana translates as in her own abode, indicating this chakra is the home of the Divine Mother or Kundalini herself. That's beautiful. So now I want to get a closing message here from the Crystal Mandala Oracle. Whoopsies. Okay. Here we go. Crystal Mandala. Closing message, please, Spirit. There we go. 
Card number 39, Goddess Sekhmet and Fire Agate. Passion of the Lion Heart. There we go. We bring you the empowerment of passion of... Ooh, lighting's getting all weird here. Okay, well, there we go. Pa uh, we bring you the empowerment of passion of the lion heart. Through passion, you will dedicate yourself with an intensity and discipline that may surprise you. Passion is love activated. It is every, it is energy that moves you from within and empowers you to act in the world in ways you would not otherwise dare to even consider. Passion gives you strength plugs you into the eternal energy of sacred fire and generates the ability to accomplish tasks you once may not have believed possible. With great passion, there can be great pain. The heart that loves wild and open is also the heart that can feel disappointment and doubt most keenly. The empowerment of the lion heart strengthens your heart to recover from any pain through the power of courage, commitment, and bold, loving devotion to what matters most to you. All right, guys. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. And I hope you all have a really fantastic day. Much love. And I look forward to connecting with you guys again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah. Take care. Bye.